Hello, everybody. What's up to you all? Um, I want to thank you for joining us on this YouTube channel. Ma promesse tout le monde que nous participons dans la troisième, ça fait trois, trois, troisième émission. Innover les zones là, so nous dans zone là. So moi merci à nous que nous participé et m'a salué nous tout le monde. Et là m'a salué tout et des invités de Mock encore une fois que nous avons dit à la sujet à aujourd'hui là et après premier e, e, innovation zone là qui était cryptocurrency Bitcoin deuxième là qui était fait avec Alan KV et Fritz sous NFT et bien je ne jeudi à nous parler parler de startup okay we're gonna be talking about startups today with Dr Naomi Blimio that's with us here again today out from a very busy tax season that took some time off to come and co-host this show with me. So thank you very much, everybody. It's going to be a great show. And now, Mia, I turn it over to you. Merci, merci, Laurent. It is a pleasure for me to be here. Nous salue tout le monde qui branché. Nous dit merci à Monsieur Fritz Charles that is back with us for our second uh, session. And we have Mr. Jim Chu, who is also with us. Everybody should already know if you watched the last episode, Mr. Fritz Charles is a Wharton Business School graduate, um, a crypto educator, and a programmer at Instagram. And also we have with us a special uh, guest, Mr. Jim Chu. Mr. Jim Chu is an entrepreneur, investor, and a philanthropist dedicated to pioneering new ways to apply innovative technology and finance to drive equitable economic development in frontier markets worldwide. Jim has spent decades working in tech in the US, Europe, the Caribbean, and across Africa. He previously founded Glow IT, an access to water social enterprise in Haiti. And today he's the founder and CEO of Untapped Global. Small businesses are the backbone of every economy. But in many emerging markets, small businesses are left out from financing. Whose mission is to bridge the investment gap in frontier markets by creating alternative financing opportunities for entrepreneurs and the NEST, an international investment network connecting emerging market startups with investors from around the world. Jim has undergraduate and graduate degrees from Stanford University. Thank you so very much, Mr. Jim Chu, uh, Fritz Charles. Welcome to Innovation Zone. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much for being here. You know, uh, it's always great to talk innovation. It's always great to talk tech. And it's always great to feel that we're educating millions, thousands of people that want to know more about technology, that want to know more about innovation. This is the topic of the show today, it's startups. St startups is the key to any economy and any development of any country in the world. I understood that in 1998, you know, when I founded Global Voice Group. And, and you know, it's been, it's been a very incredible journey. So I wanted to bring on, you know, today, two very key people into that movement. One is Fritz Schultz, that you all know. You know, today is a one Fritz Alunia. Fritz, tout mon ap madem bou. Je dis mes chers qui est qui Fritz Alla la. Moi, je suis je suis bagay. Je dis à mon chien, go bagay papa. So, so and then Jim, Jim speaks French. So Jim, Jim parle français pour ceux qui ne savent pas. Donc on va aller français, anglais, créole. On va essayer de faire ça pour que tout le monde soit satisfait. Tout le monde parle. Mais on parle créole pour qu'on monte et barre en cours tout. Oh, si bon, ça m'a dit comme ça. Comment on monte et barre en cours, ce programme-là. <laughs> bon, eh bien, bon, ma gueule, bon. Eh bien, le programme ne fait que casser là. <laughs> bon, donc, c'est donc, bien le programme Relax. Nous allons parler de technologie avec innovation. Et je vais commencer et par et, et Fritz, OK Et je vais commencer par Fritz, ou bien ou ben, ou, ou appeler pour auditeur auditrice de Innovation Zone et expérience ou, ou même dans start-up, OK Ça, start-up là, OK What, What's your experience in that field and, 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 uh, 
And what are the, the, the prospects that you see that could be applied for Haitian startups? Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you again. Um, startups. Um, so I'll, I'll start with the def, the, the defining what startups are. Um, startup is a new business that is in, created to solve a user problem. Um, you know, it, it's it's something that starts from the beginning. Um, every company that we see and we use every single day was a startup. Um, it was it was started as an idea. Um, the idea was worked upon. A team was built up around it. A mission was um, was defined. A vision was was brought out, and then people went and, and, and put something together. So, whether it's um, you know uh, Delta Airlines, Google, Facebook, where I work, um, Exxon Mobil, um, it all started with the idea and a person um, and a team. And so, you know, it's something that everybody should be inspired to do if they are, they, they see a problem that needs to be solved. And every and you never know where it can go. It could be one of the hugest companies in the world, right? Uh, even Tesla was something that was a startup at once. Um, I've been exposed to startups um, for uh, over 10 years now. So the first startup that I worked at was a company called Roku TV, which distributed African movies online. Um, and the problem there was the founder saw that, you know, their, you know, the, the African diaspora wanted to watch movies that reminded them home, of their homelands, but they were, the movies weren't on TV in America or the U.S. Um, it was, they were, they wanted, it was only content from these new countries and they wanted content from that inspired of inspired them from their homeland. And so they solved it by digitizing the movie space. Um, then the next startup I, I worked at was a company called Token Tax um, in the crypto space. So, you know, the problem there was if you trade crypto in the United States or across the world, you have to pay taxes on it and it's really, really hard to calculate your taxes. So they solved that problem for you. And then the last thought I worked at was a company called Universe, which allowed you to build a website on your phone. Um, not everybody has access to computers. Not everybody has access to coding, um, but everybody can be a creator. Everybody can get ideas out. And so the problem that they solved was allowing people to just take their phones, what everybody has, um, and allowing them to build out a website and getting their ideas across the world. Um, so again, you know, it's really about identifying a user problem, creating a solution, um, and then putting it out there and then working on it and iterating it. Um, and so as far as folks in Haiti, we all know that Haiti has uh, a lot of challenges, right? But the way to solve these challenges are to build out solutions. And these solutions can be brought forth through st um, building out startups, starting businesses, um, and, and, and taking it there. And then you never know what can happen, right? The next Tesla, the next JP Morgan, the next Google, the next um, Carnival Cruise Lines could come from an Haitian entrepreneur that just started with solving a problem in his or her community. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, it's such an important, such an important topic that, uh, you know, we'll have to do probably many shows on that. In terms of, in terms of, uh, you know, talking startups and the importance of it, là n'a pas les startups, n'a pas l'importance startup. Et nous te voulons inviter au monde qui c'est un pays où investisseur en Afrique d'un startup. Et puis monde ça a tout, des gens ont affinité avec Haïti. Et c'est pour ça c'est très important pour que Naomi avec moi nous invite et Jim vienne participer dans le show parce que Jim tu c'est pas on est simple. Premièrement, où elle parle les créoles. Il parle le français, <laughs> il parle anglais. OK, son son nez qui réussit. OK, monsieur investit dans paquet de gros compagnie et puis quel deal pour l'investir en Haïti. Donc pendant que tout le monde a parlé à faire charité en Haïti, Jim lui-même monsieur dit bon, lui-même il va mettre investissement, il va mettre l'argent en terre en Haïti dans une société. Donc, Jim, bienvenue. Welcome on. Merci, on Welcome. Bienvenue. It's a pleasure to have you. You know, it's not the nest and it's not going. We're not pretending to be. 
but it's it's uh, it's a beginning. <laughs> Jim also has a great show that's called The Nest, by the way. And uh, you know, we should try to do something like that for Haiti just to help the youth and help the La Jeunesse. Jim, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. And as you said, I do have an affinity to Haiti. It uh, it has a special place in my heart. And uh, I think we absolutely need more innovation um, throughout the world, but also investment. And like you said, I first came to Haiti as a volunteer because I thought the best way to help was to be a donor, to donate money, to even be a volunteer and help with charities. But uh, I realized that there are so many problems with the aid system, with the charity system. The incentives are all wrong. And ultimately, they really didn't solve the problems. They created short-term solutions at best. And in many situations, they made the problems worse. So I, I'm a big believer that if we can help startups, help entrepreneurs solve basic problems with investments, then things can change. People can make money. People can help themselves, not rely on somebody else to help them. And then feed their families, help their community feed their families, and ultimately do better. So, uh, you know, one of the things that I did after realizing that uh, aid wasn't really the answer is that I, I started a company in Haiti uh, with the IFC, which is uh, a part of the World Bank. They do private investments. And we invested in a company that actually addressed the same problem that I was a volunteer uh, trying to solve, which was to provide clean water to places um, that are outside of the main cities and, and were difficult to serve. And so we started a company called Bloaiti, which uh, has a product. If you live in Cabaret or Catimorin or Arcaille, you'll, you'll know the product. It's called Eau Vive. And the idea was to help entrepreneurs, Haitian entrepreneurs, create businesses that serve their own communities. And so, um, you know, I, we started this company in 2012, only a couple of years after the earthquake. And today, uh, Glow IT still serves many people throughout the country, in the north, in the south, even, and uh, of course, near Port-au-Prince, Nakaye, and other places like that. Uh, but one of the big challenges that, that, I, that, that we faced when trying to grow Glow IT, Glow IT was um, where, where do we find the right capital to grow? And I think that's one of the big challenges to working in Haiti and investing in Haiti. And so, in fact, the company that I run today, Untapped, our primary goal is to help entrepreneurs in emerging markets, mostly in Africa these days, not only find initial investment to get their company going, but also to grow their company. Because that's one of the areas that we did fail in when we, when we started, when we uh, grew Glow IT. We were unable to find enough money to grow Glow IT to what we wanted it to be. So we still are serving many people in Haiti today, but we should be serving 10 times the number that we're serving. And we hope that the company that I, I run today, Untapped, will be able to help the Jim Chews of 2012 and the Glow of 2012 grow to be able to serve the market that they really can serve. Merci, Monsieur Chu. On parle de qui ça qui était vraiment et fort choisi pour créer de Glow IT parce que nous dit qu'on s'accueille loi qu'on start up de ou chercher un problème. Et vous même même et startup là pour trouver une solution. Pour ça spécifiquement ou tu as choisi pour entrer dans l'industrie de l'eau. Well, so I, I entered the the water sector. Pas de anglais hein. Ok. Pour la réponse. Pour la réponse là. Um, I chose the water sector because somewhat by happenstance, I was a volunteer providing clean water in the camps uh, in Haiti, but uh, the reason I decided that starting a business was the right thing was going back to what Fritz was saying, what you were just saying now, that you have to start with a problem. And unfortunately, the issue with the aid sector was that they were solving a different problem, if I can say that. What they were solving was, let's make the donors feel better. 
let's get people to donate to my NGO, to my charity. And yes, of course, you know, part of that is at least making it look like you're doing everything you can to solve the problem in Haiti or wherever it is the money is going. But oftentimes they're not focused on what the problem is and who the customer actually is. And so I think it was what we were trying to do, what we thought was very important was to focus on the customer, the end customer. That's the Haitian who lives in Cabaret, who can't get clean water. That's the entrepreneur in Haiti who can't start a business because it's impossible to get a loan. That's what we were trying to solve. So we created products and services that provided those people with a solution that they would pay for. So our model in Grilo IT with Oviv is that we would produce water in places like Akaye and other places that are out, outside of Port-au-Prince, and then uh, provide that water in gallon, in the 20 liter, five gallon jugs, and the uh, and, and the uh, the boutiques, the, the Mam Sahas would resell them, and they resell them in all the corners of every community, so that everybody can access a gallon with the same même qualité que Kooligan, Van Saint Coud. Right. Excellent, That's unheard of. Excellent, um, and I think that that is something that is very specific about comme son startup que vous pensez non seulement des clients que vous allez servir, mais vous pensez de monde qui va venir acheter dans main en gros pour eux même à vendre en en petit comme en madame Sarah. And so, you know, it 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 would seem as if you were a wholesaler, right? And you were selling to them and actually giving them a livelihood. Uh, That's exactly it. That's exactly it. I think you know, it's just so important that we create a supply chain. And again, one of the other things, and, and my job here is not to criticize NGOs. They, many NGOs do many great things. But I think one of the, the, the issues oftentimes is they forget about the existing market that's there. And so our goal at Blue IT was to, how do we reinforce the existing entrepreneurs? How do we reinforce the market? How do we make that market work better? How do we resolve problems in the market versus taking over the services that are being delivered by Haitian businesses. So one of the things that we saw after the earthquake was free water or very cheap water given away by NGOs. Well, that put a lot of local water businesses out of business. And when the NGOs left, no more water. And so we really wanted to make sure that we were enabling the ecosystem, enabling the market to deliver the services versus taking it over, taking over the delivery of services. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that before we continue, there, there has to be, I have to ask this question because I know that, uh, a lot of young millennial professionals, um, young professionals, or even senior professionals who are here in the United States and thinking that they actually, hmm, I might want to start a business in Haiti. What did that look like? What was the process for you to actually start Blue IT? from you know from a to z what were the basic steps that you had to 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 go through wow that's a very long answer but i'll try to cut it to a very short uh, answer as short as i can um first of all it was a very difficult process um the it, it, it's not easy to start a business in haiti it's not easy to raise money for a business in haiti and what i would say is that of course it's absolutely necessary to have the appropriate legal entities and do things properly in Haiti. At the same time, uh, there are great um, vehicles and jurisdictions in order to attract investors. So if I were a uh, American entrepreneur, a, a Haitian American entrepreneur, Haitian American, young Haitian American who wanted to do something for Haiti, I wouldn't go and volunteer. I would not do that. I wouldn't go and donate money to Haiti. I would figure out a way to start a business in Haiti, incorporate it in the United States, raise money in the United States because there are, there's a, an abundant source of capital in the United States. Let, 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 me, let me just translate that in Creole very quickly. Yeah. Because what you said is very important. Soccer, 
Jim m'expliquer là, c'est que un avantage ou bien une bah, que M. Lee m'a appris, c'est que en Haïti, il y a un paquet d'opportunités pour investisseurs venir en Haïti. Il y a un plus gros problème, c'est accès à capital. Donc, ça que M. T. fait lui-même, c'est que M. crée, il ouvre une compagnie en Haïti qui s'appelle Glow Haïti, et il crée une compagnie aux États-Unis qui s'est mise en mer, qu'on que il est capable de collecter investisseurs pour venir investir dans la compagnie. Ça, c'est un gros problème qui est en Haïti, c'est que la loi haïtienne n'est pas tellement avantageuse pour start-up. Donc, il y a pile des avantages, pas accès à crédit, par exemple. Mais un gens pour capable de gérer le problème, pour contourner le problème, c'est que vous incorporez une maison mère aux États-Unis, qu'on soit accès à la banque, à la capitale, à l'investisseur américain, qui ont même des fonds illimités, et puis qu'on va opérer en Haïti. Donc, Haïti lui-même, la collecte des taxes normalement, mais l'investisseur lui-même doit investir dans la compagnie et faire un bain grandir. Donc, ça, c'est un point capital de start-up que faut nous comprendre et, et dans ce sens-là. Et, et, et par exemple, donc Jim, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm sorry that I wanted to translate that in Creole. No, 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 no. no. Gain, gain no that was an excellent point. Gain paquet capital yeah, aux États-Unis. And so you have to really... Um, you can go in Creole as much no, as... You, you know, as much as... Uh, uh, permits. I'll, 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 I'll keep it to uh, what, what makes uh, most sense. I don't know if I'll make any sense unless I'm ordering that. <laughs> But uh, um, no, so so yes, I, I think that's a critical point that you you have to make it you, you have to uh, make it attractive and easy for investors to invest in your business. And not only is that make, meaning that you have to have a good idea and a good business, of course, but little things like where are you incorporated that matters to in investors. Because for an American investor, you want to know that your money is going into a safe jurisdiction. And so my high recommendation- But Jim, I have a quick question there. Yes, please. So now I understand why creating your LOC or C Corp or what have you in the US helps you with investments, but does it in turn potentially hurt you a little bit when you operate in Haiti? Not at all, um, because it doesn't, it doesn't uh, mean that, it doesn't excuse you from uh, creating an entity or working with an entity in Haiti. You have to be legally operational in whatever jurisdiction you operate in. But having a parent holding company in the U.S. that is raising the money and that you know deals with the bank accounts and deals with all those things that are easier in the United States makes it much easier to then operate in Haiti. So, <coughs> excuse me. So with Glow IT, there is a international entity that held all the investment and a local entity that operates the business. And so that differentiation is very important. Even with the investors, or I'm sorry, the entrepreneurs that I work with in Africa, the easiest companies to invest in aren't necessarily uh, Benin companies or Togolese companies or even Kenyan companies. They're British companies or American companies that are operating in those, in those markets. Wow. And so there's really two things. Well, how do you raise money? And how do you operate? And the right structure um, for those two things may not be the same. That, that's very interesting. So, ça, ça Jim, je t'explique là, c'est que on comprend rien de quoi. Il y a une façon que les mêmes les ouais qui puis qui puis facile pour jouer un financement pour business ou c'est que on incorpore aux États-Unis et puis on va faire business en Haïti, en Afrique, dans les Caraïbes, là quelque soit reste côté au monde. Non, pour ça parce que investisseurs yo, surtout marché capitaux américain yo, yo même yo même investi dans marché la caillou côté que yo sûr yo comprennent loi yo yo comprennent juridiction yo comprennent les ça les règles du jeu tandis que leur prend compagnie en Haïti pour compte li ou a besoin très peu monde qui prend chance là parce que pas comprendre règles vrai là donc c'est ça que je avais expliqué là que au capable font incorporation aux États-Unis par exemple Delaware côté monsieur et e, et incorporer business yo ou font C corp OK de le web donc on y a m'a demandé Naomi qui ça C corp là pour pour moun k'ap gade yo là qui ça et puis pour incorporer tout parce que nous va aller rentrer dans incorporation OK nous va aller bay deux trois et gens pour moun k'a incorporer ou k'a faire dans n'importe qui pays au monde tout et mais qui ça C corp là qui avantage C corp là ba ou Naomi alors faut 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 m'appeler que Naomi son gros comptable OK donc il va le k'a expliquer nous ça ça C corp là 
Donc, euh, merci, Laurent. Donc, ma bannou nous en brief uh, overview de, pour comparer yon S-Corp avec yon C-Corp. So, yon C-Corp, c'est standard um, coopération um, under the IRS rules here in the United States. Okay? So, IRS is the Internal Revenue Service. C-Corp, là, c'est standard. Si que Wale, par exemple, soit vivre en Floride, Wale sous Sunbiz, Wale et créer une incorporation, automatiquement, la pion si quoi. OK? L'autre option que vous gagnez, c'est yon escort. Escort là, is what is elected as a special tax status with the IRS. C'est yon élection que ou mandé IRS pour venir yon escort pas vrai et puis yo ba ou yon spécial tax status de bouton de IRS a bon spécial ça veut dire qu'on ça que ou pral payer moins tax avec yon S corp que ou te payer avec yon C corp par exemple pour tout monde qui qui déjà comprend ça ou qui pas connaît leur ou son C corp compagnie a payer tax après ça, ou même qui met compagnie en fin d'année, si vous êtes touché et comme dans compagnie, ou pral payer ta. Ça relève double taxation. Pas vrai? Et différence là, c'est avec escop là, c'est un seul taxe ou payer. On dit par exemple, compagnie a te fait 200 000 dollars, l'offre réduit toutes dépenses ou ou vient joindre que et compagnie a fait 50 000 dollars pour année ou vient payer taxe sur 50 000 dollars seulement et avec un sicop ou t'a payé cob ou t'a payé taxe sur gros là et ou t'a payé taxe sur net là c'est c'est ça qui fait que il y a deux grosses différences entre sicop et escop mais escop là c'est une élection et pour faire élection ça a une forme qui est les um, 2553 et 2553 ou rempli comme non ou voyez le bail IRS pour demander pour faire élection ça en plus mon parrain est pas vrai depuis depuis il a fait depuis il enregistre compagnie they've just become an S corp you pas I'm sorry they just become a C corp you pas connais que S corp là existait et mon ça chaque année il paye taxes dans compagnie il paye taxes et personnel il n'en compte plus jamais dans compagnie Bon, c'est ça, c'est un brief overview pour pas comprendre les différences entre C-Corp et S-Corp là. Une, c'est pour l'argent. Une, faut payer deux fois. Monsieur Loa? Oui, merci, non. Et donc, ça, Naomi, merci pour précision, hein, pour mon cap garde là. Qui ça con S-Corp, qui ça con C-Corp et, et, et Jim. En général, l'OA peut incorporer ou même et on compagne. Ou, ou recommander parce que vous investissez dans pile compagnie en Afrique, Glo Haïti a lui-même lui incorporé, lui gon escorp ou bien lui gon sicorp. Well, um, so Glo Haïti is not actually incorporated in the U.S. It's actually incorporated in, in uh, offshore in the Caymans, but that was that was just a requirement from one of my investors. But um, yes, you know, as as Dr. Blamir mentioned, uh, there is double taxation with a sicorp. But uh, there are some benefits to a C-Corp um, if you one day become a much larger company. So one of the, one of the big benefits of a C-Corp for investors is that uh, when you sell the shares of the company, if you are an investor into a small company, as defined by a company with less than 50 million in assets, that the capital gains from the sale of, uh, of your shares is under federal IRS law tax exempt. So under section 1202 of the uh, of the uh, of the Start Act um, uh, with under Obama passed in 2013, that is 100% capital gains tax free. So that's a big incentive for many investors to invest in you, and that is only applicable to C corps. Why? Because a C corp, the way it's designed, is really to be a big corporation. You might start small, but you eventually become a big corporation. And the government, the IRS, is trying to encourage people to invest in these small companies so they can become big companies. And so that's one of the advantages of C-Corps. And of course, there are many advantages of S-Corps. And at the end of the day, you need to talk to experts like Dr. Blanier, who know what the pros and cons of each 
kind are in order to make the right decision for your company. Thank you, Jim. And, you know, we just want to make sure that because we're talking about startups, um, for us that are going into it as a small business owner, uh, it's very important that you understand the S literally means small, right? Um, and so as a small corporation, you do not want to expose yourself to a larger tax liability. But once you, you know, start rolling on Zibonyudia with the big boys, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, you have a, a large um, a company that is functioning and you have shareholders and you are not actually a small business owner functioning for yourself, but you are actually generating revenues for your shareholders and you are looking to make your shareholders happy with you. You know, that's where the C Corp comes into play. And as Jim stated, you have a lot of benefits where that is concerned. But specifically for someone who's just starting, you know, you have an idea, you have a vision. Um, the S Corp is the way to go in the beginning. Merci, Kondi Munyodia. You know, you're ready to, when you, once you're ready to run with the big boys, if you, um, uh, ou gain shareholders, ou, you know, ou gain moun ki investi nan kompaya, et job ou, lor gain moun ki investi nan kompaya, se assure ke investeur ou fe la jan. Okay? So the C Corp, um, is the way to go. And, you know, depend, it all depends on your tax accountant going to, pour assurer qu'on bon comptable ou expliquer comptable là mais qui ça me veut faire et si que ou pas pour issue stock ou pas pour gain shareholders 9 times out of 10 comptable là a directo dans dans direction pour gain en escorte mais si que ou pas gain invest um investors ou pas veut vendre shares et you know ou pas arriver non point que you know you want the company to go public right these are all these are the right structures for a C Corp. So depending on what you're doing, qui sont à faire et qui est, qui j'en parle structure compagnie, comptable ou abdu qui ça, qui j'en parle. But, but I would say, uh, just to give really good advice to all those entrepreneurs out there is to find a bon comptable like Dr. Vladimir, to find a bon avocat because these are tricky issues and you have to get them right. And there are a lot of benefits to one thing or another, but there isn't one size that fits all. So make sure that you get good advice and make sure that you're making the right decisions from the very beginning. Et il y a une bagaille que moi, pour tout le monde qui a regardé, qui aux États-Unis, il y a une bagaille que moi, qui a dit, a lot of us, we have LLCs, and we have one member LLCs. Et nous, pas qu'on est que, Yon one member LLC, log fe taxu, ou fe taxu si ou, ou fill out sa um, tax uh, 1040 form um, plus a schedule C. Ou pa koné ke, andon wap, wap rempli schedule C ya, ou ta doué e elect to get an escort. So sa se très important, an pin nan nou mem ki gen small business, um, qui pa koné ke yon LLC ou ka elect ou fe taxou kom yon escort. C'est très important tout parce que encore, there are much, much more advantages le ap fe taxou kom yon escort que si ou ap e fe taxou kom yon small business owner avec yon LLC. Again, all of these um, different nuances ou strategi pou ka pe moins tax parce que Vous connaissez ça que nous cherchons pour nous garder moins stacks pour assurer que nous avons un bon contact qui a bon et information pour faire ça. Et ensuite, lorsqu'on est small business owner, pour qu'on nous travaille du en pile, pas vrai pour pour élever business là, pour faire business dans le marché. Et lorsque cette taxe là, taxe là, c'est pas seul et on rapporte que on by IRS, taxe là son pouvoir d'achat. Ok, m'a dit ça encore. Taxe, c'est pas seul on rapporte que on by IRS. Taxe là son pouvoir d'achat. Ça veut dire que combien de corps ont entré dans le business, là, combien de corps ont été leur année à finir, ça peut le dire yon banque, ça peut le dire yon investor, how much or how profitable, profitable your business is. 
and the way that you do your taxes um, has a lot to do with that. Dr. Blumer, um, creating these entities is not only about taxes, right? It's also about protection, right? Because I can start my business just as Fritz Charles and walk, you know, start selling whatever I want to sell. Exactly. Um, but then if something goes wrong, um, people could come after my house. People could come after my savings for my children. Yes. They can go up, come after my family by suing me and things of that sort. Um, and when you have an LLC, S Corp or C Corp, um, you are protected um, from that because, um, you know, people will go after the entity rather than the individual. And that's also very important. Um, exactly, Charles. Um, Fritz ou bien dit, you know, um, sacre ou créer coopération because you want to make a distinction between the individual who owns the business and the business. Pas vrai? So, ça veut dire comme ça que if I am Naomi Blumier LLC, bon différence entre Naomi Blumier LLC et Naomi Blumier. So, si on a fait un business avec Naomi Blumier LLC, on ne va pas marcher bien. Wapsu Naomi Blumier LLC. Mais, à ce que Naomi Blumier gagne, à ce long que moi, tu géré le business là, comme une entité, pour qu'on lit, ou pas qu'à, you cannot penetrate uh, the business to come to me. The business itself will pay the liability, whatever it is, and that's it. Mais si que, ou, j'en bagaille qui est le piercing, the corporate veils, ça veut dire ça que même si vous avez une entité à se mélanger ou commingle l'argent, vous pouvez non non seulement go after the business, but they can go after you too. So while you are looking to protect your assets as an individual and the business, you have to make sure that you separate the two and you, you operate them individually and you make sure that there is no correlation so that you can have that protection. Bon, là, là, il y a je crois que nous avons bien compris le système taxe américain. Donc, tout le monde qui veut incorporer une compagnie, il faut prendre ça en considération. Et là, on a parlé avec Jim, on a parlé avec Fritz, on a parlé avec Naomi, on a parlé de start-up. Donc, start-up, c'est un moyen pour le monde lever à terre à tout. Parce que des start-up qui commencé chaque minute, chaque temps à travers le monde, ou pour un pays même avec Kenya. Afrique du Sud, Nigeria, des de, de entrepreneurs qui commencent avec zéro, par exemple, on va faire un coup d'avec, qui sont petits banques, qui commencent son app, et puis je dis à la qui vaut, banque là pour être parle, vaut 500 millions de dollars. OK? Bon, je ne sais pas combien de banques en Haïti qui vaut, qui est valu à ça, je ne pas faire une polémique avec banques en Haïti. OK? <laughs> Mais pour montrer que les gens ont un risque, OK, ils ont investi, ils ont fait une start-up. Et puis, Startup la vie vaut 500 millions de dollars américains. OK? On a parlé de un banque Nigeria qui est le Kuda Bank. K-U-D-A Bank. Et il y a un conseil qui a fait à travers le monde. Bah, on est en Haïti. Il faut nous parler avec le gouverneur. Gouverneur Jean-Baden Dubois. Pour qu'on ait, eh bien, est-ce que y a même des gens qui ont une licence digitale en Haïti? Mais ça, c'est un bar qui a fait à travers le monde. Euh, Donc, this is something that's going on throughout the world, and this is, should be definitely considered in Haiti to incentivize fintech. And not only in Haiti, but in all the Caribbean, and it's already happening in Africa. So now, I'd like to turn it over to Fritz to talk a little bit about, now that you, know, this, now, now that you have your idea, now that, that you've incorporated, hopefully, you know, like you know, following Jim's advice, following Naomi's advice, Now you have to get your name and your company known, okay? And who better to talk to about this than somebody working at Instagram, right? Yes, yes. So, so tell us a little bit about that, Fritz, because let, let's say now, now you know. I mean, what are the the statistics in terms of advertisement on Facebook, advertisement on on, on Instagram? What are the benefits uh, of that? Kisak benefits na pou moun fè reklam. Ou ap travay pou Instagram, so wè ou menm. E ki jan pou entrepreneur ki gen startup, OK, komanse fè reklam sou Instagram avèk Facebook. Yeah, so Instagram has 2 billion people. Um so and 
it's so it's it's a huge audience. Come on, gang, two two billion. Two two billion. 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 So it's huge. Everybody's on it, um, and it's free. That's the most important part. Um, so if you want to do advertisement on the radio or newspaper, you have to pay for that. On Instagram, you could just start a biz, start a page, and get a following. But obviously, that could take time, right? Um, and so if you want to speed it up, then there's also you could pay Facebook to or pay Instagram to advertise your business to the followers. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money. Um, you could spend five dollars. You spend um, ten dollars um, to spread your business, right? Um, you could also do partnerships, right? So you could reach out if you if you know your audience is a fan of a certain compas singer, or of a fan of a certain of 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 the PM Laurent. You can try to reach out to the different influencers and pay them to promote your business. Not all of them are open to that, but uh, many of them will be. Um, and then you could do things like leveraging things like IG Live, right? Where you could go live, you could tell people about the problem you're solving because your business is to solve a problem. Um, and then bringing them along the ride, making them feel that they're part of your business. Um, you know, show them, show them your office, show them your factory, show them, show them, you know, show them you speaking to suppliers and things of that sort. And then they'll be more vested in your business. And Instagram is a free platform that allows you to do it. And you don't need a whole team. You just have your phone um, and you could you do it wherever you are. Um, so that's some of the power um, of, of leveraging Instagram to grow your business. It's global. It's huge. It's free. Um, and also there's some paid options that are very, very affordable. Um, I think, um, but while we have, I want to pivot. So you, um, PM, you mentioned Africa and, and we have Jim here. I wanted to hear more about um, some of the things that he's been doing in Africa and maybe some of the lessons that um, he's seen in Africa and some of the, the problems that are being solved in Africa that Haitian entrepreneurs could derive some inspiration from. Is, is that a, a question for me? That's a question um, for you, yeah. yeah. So I'd love sure. to hear more about what you do in Africa and also any yeah, uh, potential sure, sure. parallels. So Haiti. Well, so in Africa, we, you know, inspired by the experience and learnings from Haiti, uh, we're investing quite a bit in Africa and we do it in a number of different ways. We invest in entrepreneurs directly uh, and startups directly as equity investors. But we're, we've also created a company, Untapped, that's trying to solve or is solving the problem that, that I, as an entrepreneur in IT, faced in 2012, which is how do you grow your business? Where do you get the capital to grow your business? In a place like the United States, there's lots of capital. And it's easy, relatively speaking, to get money to grow your business. If you're in Haiti, it's very hard and very expensive. In Kenya, it's not quite as hard, but it's still hard. In South Africa, it's still hard, especially if you're not in the system very already. Hard. In South very Africa. hard. Very hard. And so there is fortunately a wave of what I call digitization. Everything is getting connected to the internet. And that is actually creating an opportunity to provide financing to people in ways that wasn't possible even five years ago. And so what we've created is a model that we call smart asset financing that gives companies like GloIT or other companies that have a capital need or the need to grow with capital in a way that's much easier than just going to a bank. And so that's what we've done. And I, I believe that uh, emerging markets and me, uh, many of uh, those emerging markets are, are from Africa uh, are really the next 20 years, 20, 30 years of investing. That's where so much of the growth is going to be. We already see it just like Kuda Bank, as uh, Laurent mentioned earlier, uh, great opportunities to be part of this digital wave, create value, and help entrepreneurs solve problems in their own communities. And so I think some of the learnings that, you know, to the second part of your question, learnings for some uh, Haitian entrepreneurs, 
you know, I, I, I used to say this a lot when I uh, was often in Haiti, which is, I think when you look at investors and they want to, investors want to make money. And oftentimes that comes down to the size of the market that you're investing in. And a lot of people say, oh, but Haiti is such a small market. What opportunity is there really? And I think what one of the big advantages that Haiti has that people I think often overlook is that uh, right or wrong, good or bad, it is a developing market that is close to the United States, but operates very much like emerging markets around the world, like in Africa and Southeast Asia and South Asia. And there's an opportunity for Haitian entrepreneurs to create businesses that address problems that are endemic, that are common to many markets around the world. Problems in Kenya, problems in Nigeria, problems in Indonesia. And to help American businesses figure out solutions to those problems. So Haiti could be a great innovation point for creating solutions that can be not just for Haitians, but for people all around the world that have similar problems as uh, Haitians do. So Haiti as an incubator of sorts. Haiti as an incubator for understanding emerging market problems, or I wow. should say emerging market solutions. That is not being exploited enough. Haiti is an hour and a half from Miami. Haiti is three and a half hours from New York. American co companies should be all over it in learning about what works and what doesn't work in Haiti. And so I would say that is a, uh, a call to arms, if you will, Amazing. for entrepreneurs. Find solutions, start companies that address problems that you know the 5 billion people in the world that live under similar socioeconomic conditions that they, they, they face every day and help American companies like Google or even smaller ones find solutions for them. Jim, if I you do that, you will get bought. Sorry. Jim, Jim. I have a question for you. Um, I studied um, international business for two and a half years in Europe and one of the uh, subject matters were was BRICS, you know, emerging uh, countries that are part of the emerging markets, and they came up with BRIC, Brazil, Russia, Brazil, Korea, China. China. Mm -hmm. And I never really understood why Haiti was not um, identified as an emerging market because the, some of the key things they had, they were underdeveloped, they had a mass population, just like these countries, or for whatever reason, um, the powers that be, right, did not want to recognize us as one. You know, with your experience doing business here in the United States and in Haiti, why do you think that is? And what is something that you think we can do as um, Haitians uh, living here in, in the United States, having the ability to probably do business in Haiti to change that narrative? Yeah, I mean, look, I I would say that that's a very good question, and it's it's a really difficult one because I have spent and I still do spend energy and time trying to change the narrative on Haiti. Um, you know, Haiti has so many amazing, beautiful places and has amazing talent and people, but all people see are kidnappings, earthquakes, hurricanes, and poverty, right? And it's hard to change that narrative because there is that in Haiti. And yes, people focus on that, but I think what we need are success stories and you need successes to be able to highlight. And it's not that there aren't any, there are, of course, but I think one of the challenges is how do you make those success stories relevant enough to global investors so that they care. And the reason why I, you know, I, I talked just a second ago about um, Haiti being a gateway or a stepping stone or an incubator for, or a window to the rest of the developing world is, you know, as much as um, we want people to just simply care about Haiti, investors care about making as much money as they can. And in order to do that, they have to, you have to appeal to them with a big market. And so unfortunately for many international global investors, 
a Haitian market isn't quite big enough. But if Haiti is a window to 5 billion people, then it changes. It's different. So unfortunately, I don't have a good answer for you on how to change the, the, the face for Haiti. But I do think that making or creating very relevant, very compelling investment propositions for global investors who aren't there just to donate money, but who are there to make money. I think that, that that's what Haiti needs to do. And that's the government that needs to do that. That needs, that's civic leaders in Haiti. That's uh, even the international community. They need to do a better job of fostering innovation and creating a healthy business environment so people can start businesses, succeed, and invest. Well, that's, you know, I mean, I mean I'll testify to that. And uh, that's, that's, that's what you did so well when you were a PM. Well, that's one of the Haiti. things that, that is the most important is, you know, is establish, first of all, what you want for your country. What do you want for, the, for Haiti? Because if, you, if you're going to change the narrative, the narrative is going to be changed by Haitians, by the government, by the leadership as to what type of country do you want? I mean, do you think that- Can, can I just say one comment? Burning... When you were a PM, you, you created doing business in Haiti campaign. Uh, Haiti is open for business and you created some great media assets. I thought that was beautiful and wonderful, right? More of that is needed, right? Telling the story that already exists, that needs to be done. And I think you did an amazing job when you were a PM. Um, but we also need more success stories. And we also need more uh, Laurel and Lamotts as PMs uh, telling that story to the rest of the world. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the, you know, having been in that position, I can, I can tell you that it's not difficult. It's not difficult if you have the will to do it, if you, you know, love your country and want to put the country first, to advertise and, and, and spend resources in advertising your country, just like, you know, Jamaica, for example, why is everybody going to Jamaica? Is it because it's mm. safer? No. No. Because Jamaica is spending a lot of money and has beautiful places and is showing them to the world. It's not showing burning tires every day. It's not showing the gangs operating on Matissan qui bloqué. We have We have national numéro de bloqué. Because when you're kidnapped. Exactement, pour que toi, mon Dieu, kidnappé. Parce que ça, mon Dieu, pas au bonheur. Leur montre l'image, ça y est. Mon n'a pas, c'est que, alors, mon politicien ou bien gang n'a pas fait action, ça, li bon pour lui. Mais l'idée est tout à Haïti. L'idée, question gang, non, question de gang à opérer, de, de question de matissant bloqué, bah, ça y est, son image négative qui détruit l'image pays. Ya. Donc, est-ce que, nous sommes capables d'attirer investissement, nous sommes capables de créer des jobs. Pendant que les gens qui viennent faire des jobs, les personnes qui ont créé des jobs ne peuvent pas faire des jobs à l'hôtel. Comment est-ce que ça? Donc, c'est là où nous devons prendre la know, responsabilité dans nos propres mains. Et quoi que le gouvernement soit là, you know, mon gouvernement était très you know, aware que les choses devaient être faites d'une certaine façon to fight, you know, there was, there was zero gangs, you know, there was zero gangs. There should not be a country where you have gang rule. That should not never happen. Nobody, let me tell you, you guys that are watching the show, you think that in Africa, there is gangs. There is no gangs. Okay. There is no gangs in Rwanda. There is no gangs in Kenya. Okay. Or if they are there, they, they are, they are not in the mainstream. They are hiding. They're not controlling the mainstream narrative. Exactly. So you have to spend resources, you know, your diplomacy, your ambassadors have to be talking about what your country has that's good because Haiti has plenty of good, but the good is overshadowed by the bad. And people like to talk about the bad. That's the problem. You know, so well, that there's also an, an industry around talking about the bad as well. 100%. You know, the, and that industry affects everybody. It affects the jobs. It affects the poverty level. It affects the, the psyche, the morale. People are discouraged. People are li leaving Haiti. Many people have yeah. you know, their life, you know, invested in Haiti. They cannot even go to work. That has to stop. You know, you have a bunch of good people that want to, you know, 
invest and create jobs in their country, but they need to find a country that's conducive to that. And they need to, to, to people need to understand that if you love Haiti and if you want to create jobs in Haiti, first of all, the laws need to be adjusted. So you need, it, it cannot be a one person effort. It needs to be, you know, basically a, 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 a society wide effort. And people are more interested in changing, in criticizing, in downplaying, rather than building, rather than showing the good example. For example, you know, how come in the past 10 years, we probably had three or four laws voted? How do you change a country like that? <laughs> 10 years, three laws, okay? And, and then those three laws, they don't, they have, you know, they were passed, you know, you know, we managed to pass the uh, electronic uh, business law. You know, now you can, rec now they can recognize an email as part of doing business because before it was all handwritten. Like if it was not handwritten, if it was tied, it wasn't good, it had to be handwritten. How do you develop a country like that? So that needs to be changed. So the narrative to answer that now, I mean, it's in Haitians' hands. Okay, and it's nobody's hands. We have to take responsibility. We have to take the bull by the horn and then make it happen as the only way. And then you're going to see Jim is going to do blue. Okay, then he's going to do the Haiti. Jim has a very nice fund that he didn't talk about called the Africa Opportunity Fund, which is investing in CapEx. Jim won't go for the Africa Opportunity Fund qui investit dans la compagnie, qui investit dans CAPEX compagnie, compagnie qui a besoin d'acheter un inventaire, compagnie qui a besoin de financer des futurs achats, et même ce bon fonds qui fait ça. Mais le bas fait en Haïti, il fait en Afrique. Parce que, OK, business qui est en Haïti, il y a un pile problème avec question de insécurité, de kidnapping, et puis, bah, il n'y a pas clair. OK, et puis, et puis monsieur, monsieur Cabaret, route Cabaret a bloqué deux fois par mm. semaine. Ok, donc qui j'ai qui j'ai pour moi non faire business pour créer job et puis c'est mon cabaret qui a bénéficié encore c'est ça pour moi non c'est eux qui a perdu le rien job qui a créé c'est eux qui a fait job yo ensuite le rien job c'est eux qui a perdu donc faut que nous nous prenions destiné nous avec non mais et puis nous dit monsieur ok faut pas la faire ton lot de ok en tout cas en tout cas tu m'as parlé ça n'a pas les deux startups ok mais 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 environnement politique là il est important tout dans startup là c'est très important the political environment, the, the, the legal framework is extremely important in the startup world. I know that in Haiti, there is a, an organization called Bunge that's, that's pushing startups. And then there is um, the Haiti Tech Summit. So there is many in, initiatives that are happening, but all of them, they must be affected by what we're discussing now. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, would, I would love to, uh, I, I think it's my, uh, very sincere and uh, deeply felt wish and desire that one day that we can apply all the things that we're doing in Africa, investing in Africa, back in Haiti. I wish I could say that I could do that today. And I unfortunately can't say that I can today because the currency is too unstable, because the security environment is unstable, because of many, many reasons. But I do have this very sincere hope that one day we'll be able to go back to Haiti, that I will be able to go back in Haiti and invest in Haiti like I did in 2012. Well, that's, you know, that is, that, that would be a good thing for the youth. It would be a good thing for entrepreneurs because I'm sure you have, you know, Mark Allen Boussico that I see on Instagram, you know, everywhere pushing startups and, and everything and, you know, I, I applaud what he's doing because what he's doing is Absolutely. You know, he's doing miracles because to, to have to have investments in a situation like this is certainly not easy. So yeah. I applaud the work that he's doing and I applaud He, he needs to know. be on the show. Yes, yeah, he's a force of nature. He, he has, I can lie, he's certainly a force of nature and he definitely needs to be on the show. I, I, he has an open invite. You know, everybody <laughs> actually if you have a if you have a si nous gon start up to nous vle parler dans show this this show is open to everybody. Okay, send a DM to 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 any one of us, and you, you'll be more than welcome. Mark Allen, eh, Christine, eh, you know they're all welcome on the show. Um, the the Haiti Tech Summit. You know we we discuss startups. I mean this is an innovation show, and we wanna we don't wanna nobody shall not discuss this. So problem Haiti. 
But so you said, this is a global show, and we want to talk about Africa. We want to talk about Caribbean. We're gonna have we're gonna have guests also from the Caribbean, from Barbados. But so it's good for for you know other countries to see what Haiti is is doing, and for Haiti to see what other countries are doing. So we they, they learn from it. This is an education channel to show that innovation in technology is the future of 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 our emerging world, and and how much change is going to bring to the world and it, are, it, it already is changing our world every day so um I, we don't have a lot of time you know we we had an hour we had an hour and one minute um so le mot de la fin eh, for for naomi fritz and jim bon le mot de la fin i just would love to make sure that everyone knows la in the united states of america 47.5 percent of individuals who are employed are employed by small businesses. So Sabe Zivon Sakir, 58.9 million employees in the United States work at a small business. So on Anglem Gadzu Gon Sakir, 45%, Sabe Zivon Sakir, presque 50% no moon cap travail ici son small business qui bal travail. Okay? Businesses with less than 100 workers employ the largest share of American workers. So sous en Haïti, ou ka wè ke bon c'est pas c'est pas small business ka mené. Même ka dire ça qui ici aux États-Unis, ça fait pays à jeune là, ça fait pays à prosperous, c'est que plus que environ 50%, OK, nan moun ki employé, yo employé by yon small business. So sou jwenn yon problème, chercher yon solution. Et solution ça ou ko jwenn nan ou jwenn nan li ka vin your purpose, vi de vi ou que ou pote solution sa et à la fin ou fè l'argent avec. Merci. Yeah, to, to echo that point, um, you know, start with the the user problem. Um, start with the need. Um, create a solution and you will be rewarded by it. Um, everything that we see and everything we enjoy was something that uh, an entrepreneur or somebody that was an innovator um, created a solution for. The house we live in, the roads that we that we drive on, the cars we drive, um, the planes that we fly on, these were all started with a, a vision, uh, a solution to a problem, and then grew into uh, businesses. Um, so there's nothing that's stopping you to do the same, especially if you're uh, in Haiti and you find that there are problems around you. Um, you can create a business, a startup to solve those problems. And what I would say is I, I would like to second what you said earlier, uh, Laurent, which is the solution, the future success is in the hands of Haitians. It's in the hands of Haitian entrepreneurs, in the hands of Haitian leaders, hands of the Haitian government. It is not in the hands of outsiders like me a blonde like me, we can't be trusted. <laughs> the, o the only thing to get Haiti, to create a better future for Haiti are Haitians. And so I, I really challenge uh, Haiti and the leaders of Haiti to create an environment that I can, re that I can invest in Haiti again. Well, that's what we all hope, um, certainly. Mais, you know, ça m'a dit même c'est que l'île de l'État, pour que nous nou comprenions que nous gagnons un, un pays, nous gagnons un peuple, nous gagnons une jeunesse, nous gagnons toute une population, en d'un temps ou deux, diaspora, en tant que monde qu'on a ici, qui gagne un bail en commun, c'est amour de pays, c'est gens qui aiment pays, c'est gens qui aiment pays en développer, c'est gens qui aiment pays en marcher. Je ne fait personne plaisir, image que nous avons gardé de Haïti là, c'est aussi. Ok, nous avons parlé d'assassinat en président, nous avons parlé de, de gang qui finit par y payer. Si ce n'est pas gang, c'est kidnapping. Si ce n'est pas kidnapping, c'est autre qui bloque. Si ce n'est pas autre qui bloque, c'est autre qui bloque. Enfin, enfin, enfin. Il faut que bah, ça soit fini okay, pour que nous capables com commencer à faire plus de start-up. Ok? Pour nous commencer à faire pour pour nous commencer vous êtes ici nous l'école pour éducation qu'a fait pour que nous on pays encore créer les pays donc là je dis à ok we had a show focused on startups 
the benefits of startups, you know, strategies as to making your startup more efficient. To in order because the whole point of startup is to have the ability to raise capital, to access a financement. Now, you know, the big problem que dernière fois am d'abtant de Marc Alain Boussy qu'on t'a parlé de startup en Haïti, il a dit que son problème d'accès au financement. Donc Comment vous résoudre le problème ça? Au moins sur le, sur le court terme, parce que à, à long terme, vous avez aimé faire ça là, on l'a déjà. Mais, mais Jim, Jim lui-même dit, on a solution, comment vous faire ça? Donc, donc nous avons souhaité que nous avons dit, Jim, son gros investisseur lié, ok, monsieur investi, ce sont investisseurs multinationaux, investis dans plusieurs pays, plus de millions de dollars d'investissement, donc il commence à parler. Donc, fondement, il y a des gens qui commence à parler, ok? que nous prenons comme modèle, comme conseiller, pour que nous capables de réussir, de grandir, entreprise nous. Parce que chaque Haïtien est un petit entrepreneur. Chaque Africain est un petit entrepreneur. Et il y a beaucoup de similarités entre Haïti et Africa. Parce que nous sommes tous entrepreneurs. Et nous voulons, nous sommes tous créatifs, innovatifs. Donc, maintenant, let's get our act together. OK? Et let's do it right. Access to capital, you know, I mean, you know, now you have at least one more option of what to do to have at least a chance and opportunity to have access to investors. There is thousands of examples. Kuda Bank is an example um, of, you know, having a local Nigerian bank with international U.S. investors. And then you have so many others. So I want to take this opportunity to think, you know, wholeheartedly, Jim Chu, for you know, spending this hour with us, sharing, educating, um, success stories, things that work, and strategies to help you that are watching the show. So uh, we're on YouTube, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel. It's very important uh, as we're growing this channel. It's, it's also a startup that we're doing in this, in this sense because I wanted to contribute back some of the experience that we, that we got and that we get to share it with you all that are watching. Donc, merci beaucoup, Naomi. Et moi, merci et tout. Et Skylight Films, OK, qui prend le fond belle qui fait belle production. Ça, tout le monde dit, oh, moi, je suis à Belle, là, mais, mais. C'est Skylight Films qui a frappé. Et moi, merci, Régie, à tout. Moi, merci tout le monde qui contribue pour que Innovation Zone vienne rester innovante. Merci, en pile. Et à la prochaine pour le quatrième épisode. Là. Merci, en pile, Thank you for tuning in, guys. Until next time.